Jetsons, an early 1960 cartoon that depicts a family from Orbit City in the year 2062. When the show first premiered, it gave us a glimpse into the future a hundred years from now, stuff that people could literally only dream of. And with 2062 only be 40 years from now, how close are we really to being just like the Jetsons? Let's take a look into the past future of the Jetsons and see if we're on pace to be just like them. Now I'm a strong believer that science fiction pushes science fact and helps create the way of technology we have today. It all starts with a movie making some cool technology or some show creating something you've never seen before. People start to get curious and create and wonder, hmm, maybe I can do that, but how? Star Wars has lightsabers and slowly over time we've created more and more realistic sabers that don't look anything like those weird collapsible toys back in the day. The Jetsons had video phones, which at the time was unheard of. <laughs> unheard of. Get it? Heard? Anyway, so let's talk about communications. In the Jetsons, we've seen people be able to communicate through giant screens where both people could see each other at the same time. Oh, morning, Gloria. Honey, it's your friend Gloria, the cute looking one. A type of video phone of the future, equivalent to Zoom and FaceTime that we have. They could even put something over their face like filters to enhance their appearance if they felt like they weren't looking too well. Gloria, oh dear, I can't let her see me looking like this. I've got to put on my morning mask. I'll be right there, George. <laughs> Hi, Glor. Jane, darling, don't you look lovely? How do you do it? I think it's safe to say we're much further ahead than the Jetsons in 2062, in regards to video communications at least. However, our next step in communication at work, especially when working with those around the world, will most likely involve virtual reality of some sort of augmented reality like we've seen in the recent release of the MetaQuest Pro and smartwatches. I guess those could be considered a form of communication. Here we see one of Elroy's classmates watching TV on his watch, which is plausible, but probably not comfortable to do. We'd probably just pull out our smartphones in today's day age. So let's get on to the next topic and talk about vehicles or transportation. So I think this category is pretty obvious. We don't have flying cars. You can drive all the way up in the sky, but I highly doubt in 40 years we'll even have them as a normal mode of transportation at all. However, there are a few proof of concepts that use propellers to thrust a driver a few feet into the air. They're basically giant drones that can hold people. And uh, we don't need everyone flying in cities. I mean, imagine a car accident in the sky. You hit another car, plane thing, and you literally would fall, crash to the ground. We literally would need air traffic control for every single person who's flying on the road at any moment. And there's millions of drivers on the road each day. Did I say on the road? I guess in the sky. All the traffic control for every driver in the sky. Yeah, so Jetsons, Jetsons can keep this one. I don't see this happening by 2062, realistically. I actually don't see this being realistic at all. Our next topic is robot assistants. Now, most of our assistants that we have in today's age are virtual and can't really do tangible requests like, hey, go get my mail or, hey, go get me a soda from the fridge. The Jetsons have a robot housekeeper named Rosie, Rosie the robot, who can walk around the home, show emotion, give a little sass, and help the family out. All we have right now is something that can turn the lights on about 60% of the time and tell me what the weather is about 40% of the time. Alyssa, what time is it? What the hell is wrong with this blasted thing? Amanda! These kids done bought me a busted machine again. Now, I do believe we will have walking robot assistants. Tesla is already working on their Optimus robot, which is said to resemble a human and will be able to do similar tasks like water plants, grab food, grab you a bottle of water, pour you a bottle of water. I can really see this being helpful, especially in the elderly community where people live by themselves and need assistance with certain tasks. And there are a few robots that we have now, but they actually roll around your home and some are in restaurants too. They can deliver food to your table, but they don't necessarily grab the food themselves. They have to have another person put the food on their tray and uh, they're kind of like a fancy robot. <laughs> they don't talk. They just go to the table they're told to go to. And then when they arrive to your table, you just kind of take the food off the tray and then it goes back to its charging station or whatever. The ones we have now in homes are generally smaller and roll on the ground. A robot. Yes. What are we going to do with a robot? Well, Astro, follow me. 
Amazon a while ago released Astro, which is essentially an Alexa on wheels. It has a screen so it can emote a bit. Uh, the screen can go up and down, it can take a selfie of you, it can follow you around if needed. Um, it can even map your house. I'm not sure why exactly it needs to do this. I don't have one, so if someone knows, please tell me. Maybe it's for like you telling it to like, you know, go take a picture of so-and-so in their bedroom. I, I don't know, whatever. So supposedly, it can be used as a security camera as well. When you leave the home, you can take control of it and then do like a patrol around the house. It's even awesome for people who have dogs. You know, you can see what your dog is up to. It just rolls up into the dog's bedroom or the office or wherever the dog is. And uh, it can bring you a soda, but there's an asterisk. You have to put the soda in its cup holder and then you could say something like, you know, Alexa, deliver this water to the living room, I guess. But you have to put it in there. Now, Rosie the robot in Jetsons, no offense, but she kind of looks like a really fancy toaster. I mean, her mouth is like a weird door thing. And why are they making her wear like a maid outfit? I think in the 1960s, they thought like every robot was going to be a maid and this is what they're going to have to look like. Alexa would never. I think by 2062, we'll be way past Rosie the robot. But as of now, despite her appearance and how old she looks, she is superior to anything we have in 2022. I mean, basically she can do everything that Alexa or Google or Siri can do. Um, the only difference is she does it physically. She actually said, turns on the light switch with her hands or she actually can cook you food and not just show you a recipe for food. I don't know if anyone noticed, but there was a pandemic that happened. And because of that, work life will never be the same as it was. So while the Jetsons think offices will look pretty similar to what we've had in the past few years, but with added video communications to see your coworkers um, in the office, one thing we do have to consider being a leap forward is the advancement of team remote working that we have. We can collaborate and work with those all around the world at any given notice. We also have laptops and portable computers and phones that I consider advanced technology that they didn't have. In the Jetsons, we still go to the office, but he has a briefcase, which if you haven't seen, most people don't carry briefcases anymore. And uh, he still has an annoying boss who gets on him when he starts slacking off, right? Uh, another thing about slacking off, I think it's interesting that they have a company named Slack that has to do business just like that deals with like not slacking off. That's interesting. Um. Anyway, so so what's the verdict? We're ahead of the Jetsons in regards to working and the working environment. We're able to collaborate more efficiently with a lot more people, which allows us to get more work done. Also, I forgot to mention regarding vehicles in the Jetson. Um, we're on a path of having autonomous vehicles drive us, which yes, is very different from flying cars. And I don't consider flying cars to be futuristic. I just consider them to be a different form of transportation, kind of like an airplane is a different form of transportation. So I'm gonna give that point to us for futurism. Overall, there are some things we have exceeded expectations for, like communication, but also there are some things that we're so close to being like them, like with Rosie the robot and robot assistants that we have and digital assistance that we have. As far as vehicles, they win in that category. I'll give them that. A flying car through a flying city, that's pretty cool. It's really hard to compare self-driving cars to flying cars, especially with flying cars seeming really unsafe and impractical at the time. We're heading in different directions for our future, and that applies with a lot of technology we have. I think we're slightly ahead of what the Jetsons have predicted by 2062, so when we do get to 2062, oh, things are gonna be looking a lot different. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, I really hope you did. Uh, I would appreciate it if you left a like and shared this video. And give me some more topics of what other videos you'd like to see me do. Alright, I'll see you guys later. Peace.